Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. Now I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to assume that this expression is equal to a simplified one that looks like this. a root 6, b root 3, plus c root 2 plus d, where a, b, c, d are rational numbers. So my goal is to find the value of a, b, c, d by setting up a system of equations with four variables. Therefore, I need four equations. To keep a long story short, we're going to go ahead and distribute this, cross multiply, set it equal to the numerator, and that's going to give us something like this b plus c minus a times root 6 plus 2a minus b plus d times root 3 plus 3a plus d times root 2 plus 3b plus 2c minus d and this equals root 6 minus 2 root 3 plus root 2 plus 4. And then we're going to compare the coefficient of root 6 with this one, coefficient of root 3 root 2 and the constant term which happens to be 4 and from there we do get a system of equations with four variables that looks like this b plus c minus a equals 1 2a minus b plus d equals negative 2 3a plus d if i didn't make any mistakes by the way 3b plus 2c minus d equals 4 and then you can go ahead and name these equations 1, 2, 3, 4, and then take two at a time. There's a couple different ways to go about it. You can definitely use matrices, determinants for this, like I think there's a, what is it called, Kramer's method, something like that. Using linear algebra, we should be able to solve this system easily. I mean, it takes some calculations, but you can also plug it into a calculator or just Desmos. I mean, I meant Wolfram Alpha. Anyways. So you can kind of solve it. If I was solving it without using any of those tools, I would probably try to eliminate one of the variables, such as a. For example, these two equations can be used to eliminate a, and then we can use these two to eliminate a again. That gives us an equation in b, c, d, and then from there, eliminate another variable, use the third one, which has b, c, d. So your goal is to basically reduce the number of variables every time course there's a lot of steps and you're probably gonna make a mistake because I think I did but at the end I kind of checked my work and found out that the coefficients or the numbers a b c d are supposed to be as follows okay let me tell you what they are to keep a long story short without further ado a equals 0 b equals 2 c equals negative 1 and d equals 0 now, I don't think it satisfies this system because I probably made a mistake. I'm not exactly sure where, and you could probably come up with the correct uh, system, but these numbers are correct. I checked them, and this gives us the following. What does that give us? Let's go ahead and take a look. Remember, at the very beginning, we assumed that, okay, my expression was a rational expression with irrationals, right? And this whole thing, because we were hoping that it would simplify, right? We assumed that it would be in this form. Now, do we need root 6? Something we'll talk about in a little bit. I first thought, anyways, let me not tell you what I thought first. So, since we know the values of a, b, c, d, notice that a is equal to 0, which means there is no square root of 6. That's actually what I guessed at first, like I was thinking, do you think there's a root six? Well, I knew the solution anyways, but could there be a root six? Yes, I think there are some scenarios where we could have a root six. Maybe I can come up with a problem like that one day and maybe Monday, right? And we can do it. But at this point, we know that there's no root six and there's no constant term either. So I guess I kind of kept it very simple here. This is zero and this is zero and B is two. So we have 2 root 3 and c is 1, so I mean negative 1, that's going to be minus root 2. In other words, this expression 
simplifies as this. You know how I came up with this problem? Let me tell you the secret. Okay, ready? I took this expression and then I came up with another expression and I multiplied them and it gave me this one. And then I said, okay, let's try to reverse engineer the process. Can you divide these two radicals? Obviously, you cannot divide. Maybe you can with long division, but I don't know if it's going to be easy. Maybe there's a way to do it. It's probably going to be complicated. But solving for ABCD, even though it's a long method and, you know, you can make mistakes like I did, but at the end, uh, we found the answer. Okay? Now, what is another method going to look like? Let's go ahead and take a look at this second method. By the way, uh, I have sore throat, so hopefully, I'm hoping that I don't lose my voice because when I do, you kind of have to listen to some music. I know some people don't like it, but if you ever uh, hear music and you don't hear me talking, that means I need to rest my voice, okay? Thank you for your understanding. Now, second method is going to be kind of like more straightforward, and this is probably what you should do. The first method is something that you probably, something you shouldn't use, right? Because it's really long. Okay, so the second method involves using conjugates. So I'm going to multiply by root 3 plus root 2 plus 1 divided by the same thing because it's 1. The goal is to take advantage of difference of two squares. All right? Cool. Now, if you go ahead and distribute, again, this is a lot of work, so I did it for you. I mean, not I did it for you, but WA did it for you, which is from alpha, by the way. I just checked my work, and this is what you get from here. When you distribute those two expressions, you get actually something very simple. You get 4 root 3 plus 8 root 2. And then, at the bottom, you get difference of two squares. Remember that? This minus 1, 1 squared is 1. And then we can kind of simplify this a little bit because this is 4 root 3 plus 8 root 2. And this is 5 plus 2 root 6. Think about it. Minus 1, that's 4 plus 2 root 6. Obviously, I can take out a 2, but that's no big deal. Let's just go ahead and multiply by the conjugate one more time because we can do it at the end. Okay? Multiply by this. This time, Again, we're using difference of two squares. Notice the conjugate. When you distribute, again, I did the work for you. I mean, well, from alpha, you get 8 root 2 minus 16 root 3. And at the bottom, you get 16 minus 24, which is 2 root 6 squared. And that's a negative 8. So you can kind of take out an 8. Divided by negative 8, you end up with a negative 1 when you cancel it out. And so it will negate the numerator and it will give you 2 root 3 minus root 2, which is what we had with the first method. Of course, they should be the same, otherwise we made a mistake, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.